Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, the ultimate personal listening experience is here. That's according to Apple, who earlier this week unveiled their brand new AirPods Max, bringing what they describe as exhilarating high fidelity audio to the AirPods family. I'm gonna be trying to offer something a bit different today. So I will be talking about the hardware, I will be talking about all the things we can expect from a pair of headphones in this price bracket, but I'm also gonna be focusing quite heavily on sound and what I like in a pair of headphones because we all have our reasons for liking or disliking something, and that's perhaps no more apparent than with audio products. When I first saw these, I thought they looked like an executive toy, and by that I mean it seemed that there was a bit of form over function happening. I've watched Marcus Brownlee and iJustine's unboxing videos where they share their first thoughts and seeing them wearing them really did change my opinion on them. The over-ear headphone has been completely reimagined from cushion to canopy. AirPods Max are designed for an uncompromising fit that creates the optimal acoustic seal for many different head shapes, fully immersing you in every sound. So that sounds promising, let's hope that's true. The stainless steel frame that they describe is actually split into two parallel bars that go across the head, and in between these is a mesh. Now, I'm sure the actual mesh itself is very strong and it's not going to tear unless you actually, you know, catch it with something, but I'm talking about where the mesh meets the steel frame. We don't at this stage know any detail around how that's tied together. I have potential queries about whether it will last. So from the start, they are describing a premium product. Their approach is, we want to give you the ultimate luxury, the ultimate comfort here. And I welcome that because we, you know, we have really good headphones in the industry now and the technology we have is fantastic. We have great sound, we have great noise cancelling, great features, great control, but something that still seems to be lacking is comfort. And it's been improved over the years, but I think it's still not quite there. The beautifully anodized aluminium cups feature a revolutionary mechanism that allows each cup to rotate independently and balance pressure. The telescopic arms don't click, they actually move smoothly and you can set them infinitely at any position. I think in the photos, the ear cups look quite big and bulky and they remind me of a kind of more of a retro design my dad actually had these massive headphones with his hi-fi system and when I was a kid I used to wear them and I loved them and they were huge but they were very bulky and chunky and um, yeah this kind of reminded me a bit of those so my first reaction was not particularly great um, and this did change when I saw them being worn by people and actually they look really really gorgeous from the front because the aluminium actually kind of shines and they have like a really nice premium look. A few people have mentioned the absence of an Apple logo on the ear cups. I'm personally quite pleased about this because I think putting the Apple logo on them and badging them up and branding them up would cheapen them slightly. What could have been nice would be a discreet Apple logo, maybe on the inside of the ear cups or something like that. But. I don't think we need it on the outside. They have a huge amount of design and engineering expertise at their fingertips and their resources are massive. So they will have taken their time with this product and ensured that they're putting something out that they're proud of. I don't think this was made in any kind of rush. The ear cups are not made of leather or leatherette, like a fake leather material. They're actually made of a, a textile. Leather is a strange material. Um, it's quite polarizing. You either love it or you hate it. Um, I'm sort of a bit indifferent with leather, um, but I wouldn't particularly want it on a pair of headphones. Now, the leatherette type material, which is on a lot of the rival brands' headphones, such as the Bose Quiet Comfort 35s, which I have, um, they're just not. It doesn't. It doesn't last. It doesn't. It doesn't hold up over time. And I mean, my Bose headphones are. They're pretty old, and I've used them a lot, but they deteriorated really quickly and I've just lived with them. This is a textile mesh. It's probably gonna be a bit more robust and durable. They attach magnetically and snap into place so they can be removed fairly easily. Now this is a very smart move on the part of Apple for two main reasons. The ear cups of headphones tend to be the things that go first and often 
it's difficult to get replacement cups and you sometimes have to send them in to have them serviced. Replaceable ear cups enables users to buy their own replacement ear cups and change them without any impact on Apple's Genius Bar or any of their servicing facilities. So it keeps the cost to them at a minimum, but it also enables people to manage their own products. So I think that's a great idea. Secondly, it allows people to customize the look of their AirPods. Now we have five color options available. They've taken the highlight color from the iPad Air 4, and this has been used for the machined aluminum cups. They've then taken the colors from the iPhone 12 lineup, and that is used for the top color of the band. So that's this steel band with the mesh. And they very cleverly combined these two colors together, giving us the distinctive look that AirPods Max is already famous for. And of course, Apple makes a nice profit on the sale of every pair of replacement cups. So, controls. Now, we have something slightly different here, which I wasn't expecting. I was thinking we would get something very electronic, very touch sensory, very space age. We haven't got that. We've actually got really simple, ergonomic, old school, physical controls. And actually, I think that is definitely the way to go. We have a digital crown, which has been taken from the Apple Watch. We also have a button which is used for the noise cancelling. So the digital crown will be used for a few things. Firstly, perhaps most obviously, will be to dial up and down the volume. Now, if you want to skip tracks, you double tap. If you want to skip tracks back, you triple tap. And if you want to pause and play, you just tap once. So when I first saw these controls on the top of the ear cup, I was a bit surprised and I found the placement a little bit strange. My concern was more around water ingress and the weather, because obviously if you put controls on the top, they're way more exposed to the elements and the weather. So IP rating or ingress protection is a set of international standards that have been developed over the years to categorize a product's efficiency in protecting itself from the elements. Manufacturers can't just give their own IP ratings to their products. There's actually a rigorous testing process. So the products have to be sent off and they're tested in a laboratory environment. Now I personally understand all the drama around IP ratings because I work in AV and I'm currently working on a large project where I'm putting screens on the sides of buildings. Just because Apple haven't given an official IP rating, it doesn't mean they offer no protection. My advice would simply be to take good care of them and wait for user testing to provide feedback on how well they cope in various weather scenarios. Now, it wouldn't be right to move on from hardware without talking about the infamous case that comes with the AirPods Max. Now, it's been touted as the handbag, but also the bra or the bikini. As you can see from all of these memes, it's definitely picked up some traction this week, which you know, Apple are probably quite happy about that because it's focused attention on one of their new products. Now, one thing that the AirPods Max don't have is a power switch. So you're relying on them timing out after a set period and going into a lower power state. Now, this is where the bra case comes in handy. When you close the flap around your AirPods Max, there's a magnet inside which triggers the sensor on the AirPods Max and it puts them into a deep sleep. We've only got 20 hours of battery use with these. Now, that's not terrible. When compared to Apple's in-ear versions, the AirPods and AirPods Pro, we get about four times the amount of listening time. That's where these AirPods max out. They give you a full day of listening when you're at work. My question is, if you're trying to go liberally and conserve your battery life, how much time do these AirPods stay in the normal powered up state before they sleep? I don't know about you guys, but I have a very severe case of battery anxiety and I actually take a battery pack around with me everywhere I go. So I would like to know that I'm getting the most out of these headphones and they're not wasting charge while they're just sat on the desk next to me if they're not being used. The only port we see on the AirPods Max is of the lightning flavor. Now, some people may be surprised that Apple didn't opt for USB-C. I'm not so surprised, however, because they're still sticking with lightning across most of their current mobile device lineup. 
sound is a very personal and subjective thing and we all have different tastes and we have different genres of music that we like listening to. So I'm interested to see what the sound profile of the AirPods Max sounds like and is it going to be something that works across the board for a wide variety of musical genres or is it going to be something that favours a particular genre more than the other. For instance Sony they're known for having a little bit more bass than the rivals Bose and so this is very suitable for electronic music, dance music and maybe not so much for classical music. On the other hand Bose are known for being very proud of their neutral soundstage and they want the production behind the music to speak for itself so they don't want to inject too much character and personality into their headphones. So it'll be interesting to see which approach Apple take here. I would like personally for them to have like a really good amount of low end bass, a nice rich warm bass which is like a big hug. That's what I really, really hope the AirPods Max offer. So I actually have the AirPods and the AirPods Pro. Now I primarily use the AirPods just for phone calls, not for anything else. However, the AirPods Pro are definitely upper gear and they do offer something a bit more rich, a bit more of an immersive listening experience. I'm still not a huge fan of the sound profile of the AirPods Pro because I feel like they lack a bit of guts at the low end. I feel like the bass could be warmer and more prevalent. And that's something that is a real shame because I have no way of adjusting that in the AirPods Pro. There's no app that accompanies them which gives us the options to change the equalization or dial up different sounds and tones and frequencies within the music. And that's something that Sony is offering and has been offering for quite a while now. If you take the current industry leading noise cancelling headphones from Sony, the WH-1000XM4, Sony offers a free app to download for iOS and Android devices. Now inside the app you have the ability to load a bunch of preset EQs, so different genres, different feels, different moods. But you also have the ability to customise two presets to your own liking. The thing that's great about the way this works, it's actually not creating a filter on your playback device. The app is tapping into the onboard sound processor on the headphones and it's actually taking those frequencies that you choose and it is amplifying those directly in the headphones. The great thing about this is you get a much more natural sounding EQ adjustment. It doesn't sound like you're having something removed from your music, it actually sounds like those frequencies are being enhanced. I personally really love this sound. Anyone who's used the latest Sony headphones with the Connect app will be able to tell you that the Sony clear bass that you can apply within the EQ is a fantastic thing. It's really warm, it has a massive hug of bass to your music and it doesn't sound fake. That's perhaps the most important thing here. It sounds 100% natural, as if you're in the music studio with the artist as it's being recorded. This is something I haven't seen on any of the other competition and really for me this is one of the massive standout features of the latest Sony products. Now I would really love to see something like this on the AirPods Max. Currently we have no ability to change EQ other than in the standard EQ part of the music app in the settings. Now this for me is just a substandard EQ, it doesn't really do much and it leaves your music sounding flat as I said before. There's so much power in these headphones, there's so much potential for what we can achieve with customization. And I would love to see Apple implement this and give us the ability to really tap into that H1 chip that we have in each of our ear cups. Now I know that's something that Apple have not done in the past, they're very much against customization and they are very proud of the products they bring to market and they don't want us fiddling with them too much. They design them in a certain way and they want that vision to be carried on after the product has been purchased. And I understand that, they care about their vision. But what we all have to remember here, and this is something I hope Apple get on board with, sound is very, very personal. People are very protective about their sound. The arguments that you see on forums about different headphones and which are best and which have the best sound and which have the best bass and which have the best sound for certain types of music. All of that is purely subjective. Unless you're someone who's working professionally with audio and you need an absolutely neutral platform to be able to mix your music on, there isn't really a wrong answer here. It's just about taste. It's down to personal preference. So I really hope that Apple come through and in the future give us the ability to really integrate our music with 
their products. One of the standout features here in the AirPods Max, which sets them aside from the current competition or what we perceive as being the current competition. So that's the Sony XM4s, that's the Bose N700s and the Bose QuietComfort 35s Mark II. Now, I believe that is spatial audio. So for those who don't know what spatial audio is, it's a proprietary Apple feature and it essentially takes Dolby 5.1, Dolby 7.1 or Dolby Atmos and it essentially puts that sound all around your head. So similar to how you would have a setup in a theater or cinema or in your setup at home where you have your 5.1, so you have your left, center, right, your rear, left and right and your sub, which is the point one. Uh, and seven, which gives you an additional left and right speaker in the middle. Apple's spatial audio takes those channels and it breaks them out and it places them in a 3D space around your head. This is really, really clever, advanced stuff and it currently is only supported by a few devices. And there's a reason for that. For spatial audio to understand where your head is, the listening device needs to be equipped with accelerometers so it can tell the system which way up your head is, where you're looking, where you're facing, the angle of your head essentially from the audio source. Now you'll also need to have some similar hardware in the source device. So it's currently only working on iPhones, iPads, iPod Touch I believe, and a couple of other very specific products. We don't yet have it working in Apple TV and I will go into that in another video because I have a theory about what is about to happen with Apple TV and why spatial audio will be very difficult to implement in the current Apple TV 4K. So the accelerometers in the source or playback device are able to tell the system which way the screen is facing. So for instance, if I'm holding my phone like this, the audio will be coming out from the center of the screen in a 90 degrees direction. If I was to move my phone down and point it down, the assumption is from the system that this phone is pointing down, so it knows that the likelihood is my head is going to be in that direction. That was the chair. However, if you move your head, if you turn your head from left to right, or if you move your head down, the sound does change from the ears. So you get the impression that the sound is actually coming from the screen. Now this might sound like it's not such a big deal because we're used to that with speakers. We're used to having sound coming from you know, the front of the screen, near the screen when we watch things at home. That's how it's always been. But when you actually listen to a movie on headphones, although it can sometimes feel more immersive because you have the sound around you, it's actually quite disconcerting because you have people talking who are clearly in front of you, but the sound is actually coming from the sides. Now we've got used to this over the years. It's something that we're used to. We understand how that sounds and that feels, but it's not a natural sound. It's not a natural feeling. So spatial audio addresses this, but it also gives us the ability to hear sounds that are placed specifically around our head for dramatic effect. So there's two kind of parts to how spatial audio works. What for me is a real shame at the moment is that we're not gonna to get to experience that on a large screen with Apple TV because it's just not available as a feature yet. But I do think that it's coming very soon. Spatial audio is a brand new technology. It's very much still in its infancy. So there are no doubt some teething problems that need to be ironed out. However, what we're already getting from spatial audio is very impressive. So I'm so excited about what we have coming up. Anyone who hasn't tried spatial audio, I would definitely advise you try it out, you test it with a compatible iPhone or iPad and see for yourself how it really changes the way you listen to sound. I'm gonna to touch on the price tag. Now, $550 or pounds is a very steep price tag for headphones. However, there are much more expensive options on the market already. Some of the leading Sennheiser headphones, for example, retail for thousands of pounds, and the sound is unparalleled. Now, I think AirPods Max is not necessarily going after this bracket, and I don't think it's going after the commercial bracket either. I don't think it's directly trying to rival the likes of Sony and Bose. I think AirPods Max is really a new category of headphones and it's very difficult to make a judgment on the price at this point because we basically don't have anything to compare them to. I'm gonna hold my judgment on the price for now. What we do know is that Apple have a wide variety of products. They offer consumer and prosumer devices. Take the lower end AirPods for example. 
They retail in the UK for around £150. And you could argue that none of the rival products offer the same kind of Apple ecosystem integration that the AirPods do. Then you have the middle tier, which is the AirPods Pro. Now this is definitely a step up from the AirPods. The soundstage, the profile that you get with the AirPods Pro is significantly better and improved. You have the active noise cancellation, so we're able to block out our environment and really focus in on the music. So now we have this new premium tier right at the top where we have the AirPods Max. Now these are more than double the price of the AirPods Pro, so you have to be serious about your music to want to fork out this kind of money. Now there will always be people who feel that $550 or pounds is just way too much money to ask for a pair of headphones and that's completely fine. We all have different tastes, we all have different priorities in our life. I also think that there are people who will genuinely appreciate all the technology advancements that Apple has made in this product. And I think I'm probably one of those people, although I balked at the price when I first saw it, when I actually think about it and I break it down and I look at the spec and I look at the possibilities of what these headphones may be able to offer, that 550 pounds price point starts to feel a little bit more reasonable. Now, this all depends on my review and how I personally feel about the product. I could review them and not like the sound. That would be the first thing that would just make me send them back. I could feel like the controls are finickety. I could feel like the design and the build quality just isn't to my liking. All of that is potentially possible. But I do believe that there is a market for the AirPods Max and this price point. They're sold out across the board in every country at the moment with orders going back to April now. So clearly people want to buy them or we wouldn't be seeing sold out products. I want to leave this on a positive note and say that I'm really excited to get my hands on the AirPods Max. And whether I like them or I don't like them, I think we can all agree that this is a new era in sound. There are definitely very exciting times ahead and we will no doubt see way more products coming through in the AirPod family. So thanks for watching this and listening to me break down my first thoughts on the AirPods Max. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up down below. I will be putting out my Sony XM4 review in the next few days. I've been very delayed in doing this. I've shot most of it already and I went home to the UK for a month, so that was a holiday for me and I wasn't working. Now I'm ready to put that out, so you may find that interesting if you enjoyed watching this. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, wear your masks, and I'll catch you next time. Fully immersing you in every sound. Mersing, mersing. The noise counselling, counselling. Group of people, shall we say, who want to have everything Apple. That's basically me, but I... I have a bit of a weird thing about leather. No, don't know where I'm going with this. What I'm trying to say is there are people who buy stuff just because it's Apple and I don't do that because I don't own everything Apple. <laughs> I own pretty much most things that are Apple, pretty much everything apart from a Mac Pro, but that's on my list.